first one here from Robert. This was done before before the live, so thank you, Robert, for uh, getting in early. And so, question is: Can you talk about templates and smart ways to reduce the size of automations? So um, I'll definitely try to talk about the templates. As far as the size of automations go, um, I'm a little bit torn. Um, obviously, once you start having your automations do things and um, they, they're going to start to grow. And there's a few different ways you can actually like kind of get them down through like some smart assistant scripts and stuff like that, where you start templating um, kind of your automations. I shouldn't use templating here because it's a different context, but kind of where you're, you're kind of making like a playbook of your automations. And so then when you're actually building out your automations, you can just refer to those scripts. Um, so that might be the best way to reduce the size of the automations. I mean, to a certain extent, they're going to be the size that they are. Um, they're not like typically crazy big as far as size goes, like kilobytes and bytes and stuff like that. Um, but they can definitely get lengthy. And so I wonder if the size, Robert, I don't know if you want to comment again, but, um, if the size is the reference of the lines of code or, or, or if it's like, um, yeah. Right, and and that that's the only way I, I'm gonna take try to answer it for at least for right now. Um, but like, so you, if you're using like um, scripts inside Home Assistant, there are a lot of like functions if you've ever written code and used reusable code. So that's a lot of like what the scripts are, and you could actually call those scripts from inside your automations. So like, I could have a script that says, "Hey, turn off all the lights in my home." and lock all my doors and then i could have an automation that says hey when i leave home call the light script call the door script and so that way your automation is hugely reduced um and that but they're just reusable bits of code that you can use other places now yeah i think that's an awesome idea it's a really good point and i i think also a lot of the time is reducing clutter how do you uh, get rid of the automation that don't really work the ones you may be disabled and, and clean up a bit. Um, it's, it's an interesting point. How do you make it? How do you then make sense of what's happening? It's, it's easy to lose control. Uh, I found it with my own situation. I lost control after like, I'm out. Uh, I wiped it out and start, I'm starting again. And I'm actually recording the whole process behind the scenes. It's taking, it's taking a lot of effort, but um, and now I'm saying, hey, I need to find a way of fight, figuring this out. Um, so that it doesn't get to a mess, especially we're doing videos. You do, you do, you do in automations for videos. And uh, sometimes you're doing it for the videos and then you're like thinking, uh, you know, you got all of these automations and it starts cluttering you right? it slows you down to try. It's, it's a difficult task. Um, cool. I think let's move on to the next, uh, we have. Uh, oh, I, wa I was going to touch on the, the templates for him, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We haven't touched on that. What were you doing? <laughs> I started off with the automations because I felt like it was the easier one to answer. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can actually share my screen here. Yeah, sure. Let's see. And we'll, we'll, this uh, was I this was something we didn't actually test, so. Well, we're fine. We'll test it now. <laughs> we're going to do it live, right? I think I need to allow something on my computer here. Do, 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 do. All right, can you see my screen? It should just be a... Yeah, I think, it, I think it's us again. You're okay, sure? Yeah. yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay, so inside of Home Assistant here, I've, I've tried to um, increase my text size, so hopefully it's a lot easier to read from the stream and the video. Um, so templates, um, they're kind of like these you know, more advanced feature of Home Assistant. Um, basically, um, it, this is the templating right here. And it's kind of a mess, but basically all this turns into something readable. Like over here, you have your output here. And maybe my screen is a bit too zoomed in there. But, um, but the, the main idea of templating is it gives you um, writable code to where you can start um, making your own type of sensors. So a good way to think about it is like if you're looking at your states, um, I have the weather.home pulled up here with all these states laid out. This is a huge type of thing, but me, I might only care about the temperature of it outside, you know, maybe the wind speed and stuff like that. I don't need access to all of this, right? And these templates, they're basically just Python code. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, 
Home Assistant is just Python basically on steroids. Um, and like, so if I were to take out like all these templating features and like this right here, this is a Python dictionary, you know? And like these right here, these are just like variables that you would have inside your Python. Um, obviously it's not pure Python because it's in the Jinga, Jinja, Jinga 2 template engine. Um, but that's kind of the main idea. Um, you're going to see this a lot if you're into IT and doing stuff like that. Um, Ansible, which is a huge Python automation language, is written inside the Jinja 2 template engine as well. Um, but like even here, they're pulling out the home is sunny from inside the states over here. So that's kind of like it from above. Um, and if you're taking a look at the documentation for the Home Assistant templating, um, there's a huge amount here. You can build custom sensors um, and you can, so like, let's say you had a sensor that told you, let's, let's continue with the weather because we could actually see some of the numbers here. Um, you could actually see the temperature outside is 67. And so maybe you wanted to have a car that would say jacket or no jacket weather. And that's all you wanted the car to do. You didn't want it to actually show 67. You could build a custom sensor to do that using some YAML. But inside of here, you could actually extract stuff. Um, you could see sensor states. Um, so you could see if somebody's home or not. Um, and so just kind of to play with that a little bit more, I'm gonna go ahead and grab like the state adder um, function here. And then we'll come over here and we'll just kind of modify this. So um, let's go ahead and take all this out. And so what they've done here is they're looping through states weather. So the idea is if, if you have a home, if you have a work, and if you have a few different locations here um, that would be reporting some sort of weather, um, you'd actually get a list here. The home is sunny, the work is sunny, and stuff like that. And so th that's what they're doing here. And this, this, these little curly brackets and parentheses here, this is the Junja 2 template. Um, basically just exposing it to this code block or this template editor here as however you want to call it. So if I was going to modify, so if you have something like this, it's usually referring to some sort of Python function. So for state in state.weather, that's a very Python type of statement where you, you want to do a loop. Um, and then down here you see it again with the if, if else, and else block. But then down here, they have just the double curly brackets to expose variables. And so I think this is how a lot of people will probably end up using it is by doing the curly brackets. So if we do the curly brackets here, um, it takes it, turns it to not text. So all right, it turns it into code. So if up here, I just have this is text and it's not gonna render it because I have an empty brackets here. But if I have this is text, it is just plain text that is being passed through. Um, but if I go ahead and hop over to start templating and using that Junja 2 layout stuff, and I open this up and I'm gonna go ahead and use that some adder attribute or function provided by Home Assistant. And now inside of here, I could go ahead and start pulling some stuff out. And this one actually takes the state and what you're looking for. Um, so in our case, it would probably be Weather the home. Actually, type here, and maybe I guess we'll just go and grab one of these guys. And so now we can see that the temperature inside of weather home is sixty six point two. So I could build sensors around this and have it either show that. Um, basically, I could use the templates to extract that data um, out of the state object. So when you have like stuff like this that are huge, um, it's going to be a little bit overwhelming, and maybe it's just not what you're looking for. Um, especially when you're displaying cards on like your home screen here, you want them to be very straight to the point. So sunny home temperature, stuff like that. This is done through like templating. And I, feel, I don't know if that's like overall the best way to explain it, but I feel like that's gonna be, hopefully that's easy enough to understand. Guys, I thought that was an amazing um, explanation. Thanks for that, Chris. And it's the actual right time to say that you can actually like and subscribe this stream, but also 
go over to his channel because I'm pretty sure we'll have uh, some of these awesome uh, tutorials to come. Thanks, thanks, Chris, for that. Oh yeah, now 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 I'm gonna have to do one. So.